the time has come for the Metacham PvP IV Deep Dive. Why Metacham? Well, if you haven't noticed, Metacham has been topping most of the Play Pokemon Championships. It's one of the best Pokemon in general for Great League PvP. I think it's high time Metacham gets a PvP IV Deep Dive. So why now specifically? Uh, well, for the GoFest event, part of the uh, Tundra Habitat spawns, we got Metatite. So it'll be a good time to maybe get a better IV spread for your Metacham. And even if you do have a super good Metacham built already, you know, the rank one has a little bit of competition, as with most of these PvP IV deep dives. So maybe you'll be building the second one after this. Now, if you're not too familiar with PvP IVs, this is like your first time checking out my series, uh, then I highly recommend you check out my PvP IVs simplified video, link up above and in the description. You know, get your feet wet before you plunge off into the deep end here, because it can get a little bit confusing if you don't know how, you know, true stats and breakpoints and all that work. So that's my recommendation there. Also, if you want to reference any of the information in this video in a text-based format, I do have my article up on GamePress, the Metacham PvP IV Deep Dive. I'll link in the description as well, uh, basically covering all this information, but in a text-based format. And also, in honor of Pride Month here, I am going to be uh, donating all the proceeds from this video to the Trevor Project. If you want to get learned up on what the Trevor Project is, I'll link to their organization down below. And without further ado, let's get in to the deep dive. Starting out with some Metacham basics here. Uh, all of my simulations are going to assume that you're using Counter as your fast move. Psycho Cut can have some spicy niche utility and I don't know what scenarios, but I'm sure that they exist. But counter is such an OP fast move that it's the fast move you're going to be using like 10 out of 10 times, or at least the fast move you should be using. So I'm assuming that Metacham is using counter. As for the charge moves, I'm going to be assuming that you're using Psychic all the time. And then when it comes to Ice Punch versus Power Up Punch, uh, there are some distinctions here and there. Uh, usually they end up being kind of the same. So if there is a distinction to be made, I will make it in the video. There is a chance I might overlook that a distinction has been made if there is no distinction made just assume that it was ice punch but i did run power up punch specific simulations as well so don't think i left them out as far as dynamic punch is concerned it's a good charge move it does have its place in the right kind of situation um but for the open great league meta like in most circumstances you're probably not going to be using dynamic punch so focus is on psychic and power up punch and ice punch so when it comes to metacham's breakpoints in great league i think it's best to start out with the bulk because the bulk is going to be the most relevant thing for metacham uh most metacham in the great league are going to want to have at least 138.6 defense and at least 140 hp you can make like like under to like 138 hp possibly work uh, 142 HP would be a smidge better, um, but I think 140 HP is like the general good safe spot that you want to aspire for. And uh, in general, these stats will enable Metacham to have a performance that's consistent with the rank 1 Metacham. And to get specific, with this level of defense, it'll help protect Metacham in the mirror matchup because there is a tricky like mirror breakpoint, which I'll get more into later. There is like technically mirror slayer Metacham IV spreads, but... It's a little bit dubious how well they work out. I'll get into that more when I talk about the uh, attack breakpoints on Metacham. Um, but yeah, having that level of defense, though, will better protect you in the mirror. Um, and then it can also enable the Drapion 1-2 shield scenario. Uh, you spend one shield, they spend two shields. And then it can also enable the uh, Kafagrigus 2-1 shield scenario. So you spend two shields, they spend one shield. That doesn't sound great, but, you know, it beats the alternative as in, you know, not beating them in that specific situation, right? Uh, and then when it comes to the level of the HP there, um, this HP can help you out in the Swampert 0-0 shield scenario, the Charmalola Ninetales 1-1 shield scenario. It may also help out against uh, Altaria as well in the 1-1 uh, and possibly 2-1 shield scenarios if you're running Power Up Punch with Psychic. And then uh, it can also help out against the Azumarill 1-1 shield scenario using Psychic only, and then potentially the Registeel 0-0 situation. That you're going to want to have the 140 HP for, and then having the 142 HP will make the Registeel situation just a bit more consistent. It's not a huge deal, but it's nice to have if you got it. 
Then when it comes to Metacham's attack breakpoints, uh, the rank 1 Metacham actually already has a pretty formidable attack stat of uh, 105.87, which does meet most of the important attack breakpoints for Metacham there, so that's pretty good. Uh, when it comes to the other high rank, you know, meta champs that are non-best buddy, all of them have this attack weight or higher, so that bodes pretty well for meta cham. Uh, the reason why I'm kind of highlighting all this to you is that there are best buddy meta chams that do have a lower attack stat. If you are going for like a best buddy meta cham, I would try to make sure that they at least have a 105.66 attack stat, which is basically the rank two best buddy meta cham instead of the rank one best buddy meta cham. The rank one can never catch a break, right? Um, but in general, I feel like the, the best buddy meta chams aren't exactly worth it. When it comes to the breakpoints in particular, uh, you can see for Azumarill it starts out at 105.06, but if they have an ever so slight defense weight, then that can go up to 105.38, which the rank 1 meta cham is still getting, um, but I feel like 106.02 is like that next level of defense on Azumarill that you may want to prepare for, and a handful of meta cham that are high rank still, like in the top 5 of all meta cham, do get that attack weight, so uh, worth highlighting over the rank 1 and rank 2 there. Then you got 105.66, which boosts your consistency against shadow wall rain and it enables the zero two shield scenario possibly as well um so you just and you can even do that just farming them down straight fast move damage and then you ramp up to 91 plus energy which is pretty impressive it might not be the optimal way to play the shadow wall rain matchup but it's just Something to know that you are able to do in case you need to like land a psychic on the final pokemon or something like that uh then you got 105.82 which is a Swampert breakpoint. Uh, no notable matchup flips there. Puts more pressure down Swampert though. And then for the higher attack weights, we do have a Wishcash consistency breakpoint starting at 105.35. Uh, but Wishcash generally wants to be, you know, defensively weighted, mostly for Altaria, but I guess for uh, Metachan as well. Um, so going up to a 106.29 attack stat can be beneficial for that. That I feel like is a healthy defense weighted Wishcash there that you're getting it on. Now, there are some breakpoints that are even further beyond. Uh, at 107.35, there's an Umbreon breakpoint enabling the shield disadvantage scenarios. So you can beat them without a shield, or if they spend two shields, you can beat them with one shield. Uh, this is only a significant note for a uh, Ice Punch and Psychic Metacham. If you're using Power Up Punch, you can straight Power Up Punch them anyways. Uh, but a useful breakpoint to be aware of. Now, this is going up to that higher level of attack there. So while it does look quite appealing, just you know, do be cautious about how much bulk you're sacrificing to get that higher attack weight. And then when you get to 107.95, that is the mirror breakpoint against the rank one meta champ. So we're looking at a defense stat of 140.3. That is like one of the highest defense weights that you're going to see at a meta champ. A 106.71 attack weight on a meta champ could be enough to catch a lot of the higher rank meta champs that aren't exactly the rank one meta champ. I think that should be good enough attack you don't have to shoot, you know, for like 108 attack. But if you do shoot for 108 attack, uh, maybe go up to 108.22, just so you can catch Skarmory in the 2-2 shield scenario, getting that break point there. Uh, for that simulation, I'm pretty sure I ran it with Ice Punch, so Power Up Punch might have a little bit more consistency too. So what IVs fall into that stat range here? Well, uh, linked in my article, I got this PvP IV table uh, showcasing the 19 Metacham IV spreads that I feel are like more optimal. There were like four other ones, but they're kind of stinky. I wouldn't build those Metacham personally. Um, these are the 19 that you may want to consider building for your Metacham that have at least 105.38 attack, at least 138.6 defense, and at least 140 HP. Uh, once again, the higher attack weights can get CMP in the mirror and do potentiate a handful of other breakpoints. Uh, personally, I feel like I'd give more favoritism to the rank 3 and the rank 4 because they do have that 106.91 attack stat, which is higher than most of the other attack stats here so your chance of getting cmp is quite high and then their attack stats also threaten getting the uh attack break point on the mirror matchup meta cham if their defense is thrifting enough so i feel like uh, these two are kind of like the goals if you can get them i think those ones are, are probably the best ones there of course all of them on this list here are very very good as well and could get cmp or confer other advantages for meta cham now let's say you've got uh, several of these 19 here, and they're not the rank 3 or 4. Uh, well, which ones are, are more premium than the other ones? Well, I do have a special curated uh, 11 list, uh, basically uh, taking out the Pareto inefficient or the stat inefficient ones 
from the 19. Um, basically, a, a good way to give you an example of this is we got the rank 3 here, and then we got the rank 7, right? And you can see that the rank 7 has the same defense, actually has 0 0.01 less defense, but same defense and same HP as the rank 3. But you'll notice that the rank 3 has a 0.2 higher attack stat, which means that the rank 3, no matter how you cut it, no matter what break points or bulk points exist in this world, the rank 3 will always be better than the rank 7, right? Uh, so there were a handful of them that had that kind of situation come up. It's not a huge deal. This doesn't mean the rank 7's like trash, but as a tiebreaker, I feel like I'd rather go with like the stat efficient one, you know, rather than a stat inefficient one. Uh, so I also have a table highlighting those 11 on GamePress as well. As far as the best buddy options are concerned, I feel like these three are the only ones that are worth it in my opinion they've got that 105.66 attack stat and then they have like a higher defense or hp stat than the rank one has in this case it's going to be the rank seven because i've got the best buddy filter on so i feel like these two are kind of worth it but i don't feel like they're worth it enough to really warrant you know using the best buddy slot for but if you got them, maybe it's worth like highlighting them starring them saving them for some future where having 41 point one six defense matters who knows and if you're curious um i also have a table linking to these three iv spreads which i consider to be the the rank one mirror slayers uh once again i want to highlight to you guys that i feel like just having cmp should be enough for most mirrors and you will be trading a ton of bulk to get that absolute advantage in the mirror so it might not be you know as much of an advantage as you think it is um but if you are very concerned about the rank one mirror matchup uh, these three IV spreads do seem to be, you know, optimized for messing with that particular Pokemon. Uh, so something to think about if you got it, star it, you know, mull it over. But I feel like, you know, going for like the rank three or four or six or whatever, uh, anything with an attack weight on that previous list, I think that'll probably be a bit better than uh, than these three. But worth highlighting for the curious minds. Now, one interesting thing you may have noticed was that all of the optimal Metacham attack IVs uh, are four or greater, right? Uh, which means that your odds of having a like good or optimal PvP IV Metacham are significantly greater in cloudy and windy weather because the weather boosted IV floor is four. So under most circumstances for these PvP IV deep dives, the weather is like the bane of our existence. Like uh, consider my Trevenant PvP IV deep dive where I spent many hours trying to catch a Trevenant and then it was sunny outside. For a lot of that so it was impossible uh well when it comes to metacham here it actually enables you to more easily get the good ivs um basically when it's not cloudy or windy outside uh there are 2368 more iv variations that metatite could have a hundred percent of which are completely useless they won't be the optimal iv spreads so if you have the weather bonus on your odds of getting one of the optimal iv spreads increases by a whopping 58 percent to to simplify it to have a 50 to 90 percent probability of getting one of my optimal iv spreads uh if it's uh weather boosted it's 63 to 361 catches if it's not weather boosted, then it's 149 to 856 catches. So 58%, pretty big deal. So that about wraps up everything I gotta say about Metacham for Great League PvP in regards to its PvP IVs. Overall, a pretty forgiving Pokemon. Like 19 to 11 optimized IV spreads doesn't sound too great, but when you consider the fact that the weather bonus helps you and trade IV floors also help you instead of hurting you, it is a lot easier to get a premium IV XL Metacham than it is for most other species in the game. I'd be willing to bet that you could get like two premium IV Metachams before you could get one premium IV of most other species unless you're using like a map or scanner or something so yeah pretty forgiving pokemon and then given that there are those slight variations with the different stat weights and given that metacham has like two arguably three plus move sets that it likes to swap around between it could be optimal you know resource wise to build uh like two or three xl metacham instead of just sticking with just one so keep that in mind too if you already have a really good metacham already maxed out at any rate, if you have any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this kind of content and you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag.
I'd also like to give a special shout out to these Patreon supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. If you are going for like a best buddy Metacham, I would try to make sure that they at least have a 105.66 Metacham. Um, 